What is up guys? So I have a little bit of a different video for you today, just a short one, and we're gonna be talking about film. If you don't know what film is, obviously most people are shooting on digital cameras nowadays, but film is where you load one of these little uh, film cartridges into a camera and shoot on slides of 35 millimeter or medium format film. I've always been a digital shooter, Going from a Lumix G7 to a Sony a7 III, I've just always really enjoyed the workflow. And as a few of my friends started getting into film photography, I never really found an interest in it until I did. Now, I found this interest while we're all in this quarantine and I was looking for something new to do and film just kind of jumped into my lap. Me and one of my friends went out shooting. He let me use one of his film cameras and now I am hooked. So today we are going to be talking about a certain film stock called Yodica Atlas. Now, I have some Yodica Callisto here. This is kind of what they look like when you're getting from Yodica. I had a little bit of a different stock than that. They make really cool color films. And this was actually the first film stock that I shot on. I wanted something a little bit artistic and that is definitely what it was. So this is a specialized film that in every slide gives off basically colored light leaks. The Atlas is randomized, so every photo is a little bit different. This one, the Yodica Callisto, is a pink and green color went gone across the um, shot. I will flash some pictures of the Yodica Atlas throughout this video so you can kind of see the effects that it gives on your film. Now from the scans of this film, it looks like they have used a Kodak 400 roll and made that into their specialized film because it is made by a couple, I believe in Italy, and they have done a wonderful job on every film stock that they do now. I love the look that you get off of it. It is just a really cool artistic way to shoot if you want to do something a little bit different. Now their main shop is on Etsy and they sell many different types of film, as I said, ranging in colors and styles. The Yodica Atlas, which is what I used, is randomized colors and such. Now, as you can see in these shots that I'm showing on the screen, you never really know what color you're gonna get. It's kind of randomized, um, but I did notice that the colors show a lot more prominently in the shadows rather than the highlights of the shot. And when I was shooting this film in brighter daylight situations, I actually noticed that you weren't seeing sometimes any colors inside of it. So this shot right here was done in very bright daylight. Um, I was shooting it on the Olympus Stylus point and shoot film camera. Um, this thing is amazing. I found this in a box unpacking our new house. I believe it was my grandfather's. Um, when I got it originally, I didn't think I was gonna use it, so I just put it away. But now having that, it's a very useful uh, little film camera because you can just carry it around in your pocket. I literally throw it in a flannel pocket and forget about it. And it's nice to have when you're just running around and wanna get some shots. The other camera I have, which we'll talk about in a later video, is a Sears SLR film camera. Now, although it is from Sears, the department store, it works perfectly fine. A film camera is a film camera is a film camera. They all work pretty much the same. They just have a few different settings depending on the one you get. Now, like I said, I shot that roll in a point and shoot, so I didn't have a lot of control over the exposure, but I am shooting the next roll of Yodica that I have inside of the SLR so I can try to maybe underexpose just a little bit so I can try to get some of those colors to come out a little bit more. But I will flash a few more daylight photos of it so you can see how the colors really don't come out as much in the daylight and then some of nighttime so you can see that they really do show a lot more when you're using this in a more underexposed setting, nighttime, sunset, inside, etc. Now once I shoot this other roll of Yodica in my SLR so I can kind of control the exposure and shoot a little bit underexposed, I'll make another video to show you the results just so we can see if that actually is how it works uh, and if those colors come out more in uh, more underexposed settings. Now that all being said, this film is not for every situation. It's really just for if you're trying to get a little bit of an artistic look on your film. I did notice having it in my camera was a little bit annoying when I was about halfway through the roll and I wanted to just go shoot normal photos. I kind of had to just deal with the fact that they were gonna be pretty colorized and um, like an artistic film. 
either way, it's really cool and you won't be disappointed by the results. Now, after seeing some examples of this film, would you use this film? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have used this film before, let me know what you thought of it. I personally think it is a phenomenal film for certain situations, but um, just not for everyday use. I can see situations where I would want to be using it and situations where I wouldn't want to be using it. But overall, I, uh, I love the brand, I love what they're doing, and I'm actually purchasing a few more rolls of some of their other lines. There is one called the Yotica Polaris, which is a blue teal tint over every photo, and I really like that effect. So I'm gonna get a roll of that, shoot it, and uh, see, how, see how it comes out. And I will make another video showing the results of that, as well as the results of the Yotica Callista, which is what I'm shooting right now inside of my SLR. Now again, if you've shot it, let me know in the comments, let me know what you think. Would you shoot this film? Would you not? Why? Why not? And uh, that is it for me today. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.